Uh, which George Spain album? Never Hung Over Again. Ah, I love that one. Yeah. That's my boy. <laughs> hey everyone, what's up? Uh, my name is Pat Kernan. I'm Tony Panillo. And uh, we are changing things up a little bit here on New Music Monday. Uh, we're not going to be uh, doing this. I'm not going to be wandering around outside anymore because it's a million degrees out and I just, I just don't want to do that. Uh, so we move things inside and we're going to be turning it into a more conversational sort of thing. Uh, and Tony will bring it, be bringing you some uh, cool stuff at the end. Yes. Uh, like what, what are you going to be doing? I'm going to be talking about, well, I'm going to be bringing you not so new music monthly. Yeah. And I'm going to be talking about some records that came out around this time in a different year that isn't this year. Cool. All right, but uh, first things first, we're going to start off on uh, things that came out on Friday. Now, the past two episodes of New Music Monday, we uh, only talked about things that I liked, but this Friday sucked. Um, it really did. So there's uh, not, a, not a whole lot of stuff that, that I want to recommend. I just sort of want to vent for a little bit. Um, first, up, uh, first up, the Gorillas put out a new album. It's called Na The Now Now. Uh, first off, that's a stupid name for an album. Isn't that um, a band? Uh, like, maybe? Now Now is definitely a band. Well, this is The Now Now. Oh! So it's, oh, it's very different. Th it's, it's different. Um, okay. So, the Gorillas were great at some point in their, their lifetime. Uh, well, they had or, that one song. Yeah, but, you know. The one song. <laughs> Feel Good Inc. Yeah, I exactly. Think is what you mean. That's the song. Um, their first album was awesome. Uh, their second album was awesome. And that's it. Uh, but the Now Now is their fifth or sixth, depending on how you count it's them. It's a big gap there. Yeah. The yeah. Um, everyone since Demon Days has just gotten more lifeless and less engaging and more bloated with just filler to the point that this new one just feels like it's filler 100% of the time. Uh, feel Bad Ink. Yeah, Feel Bad Ink is what this one should really be called. Uh, I listened to it just basically to say that I could, that I did, and I um, wish I didn't. <laughs> so, that's so heavy, yeah. yeah, that's, that's uh, how that goes. Um, moving up a little more positively from there, uh, we're going to talk about the new one from Drake uh, called Scorpion. Yeah. So uh, rappers are doing this new thing lately where they're just filling albums with crap. You know, like the, the new Migos album was, I think, two hours long. And it didn't need to be. The reason they're doing it is so that way, uh, the more listens that you get on a streaming service, the higher up you go on the, the album charts. Well, that doesn't really work if people only listen to the first three songs and they say, what is this? Well, what, what they do is they, they'll listen to the whole thing once, figure out what they like off of it, and dump those songs into a playlist. So they get okay. they get a ton of streams early on, the album goes platinum, and then nobody listens to it again. Uh, and that's exactly what Drake did here. Uh, and... There are 45 minutes worth of good songs on uh, Scorpion, and it is 90 minutes long. Uh, the, the first half, Drake tries to rap and sound hard, and if you have ever listened to a Drake song, you know that he's not hard. <laughs> There's nothing, nothing thought about Drake. Uh, and then the second half, he does this weird, like, 90s porno R&B and it's just like that sounds more like him yeah, yeah but it's worse oh. it's like it's just so lame like he's like knocking off a d'angelo and whatnot and i, I, just, I just don't like it i don't really have 90 minutes to no get into that, I don't think. no 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 so like uh drake has already dropped like f four or five singles from this album already and those are the best songs just listen to them just listen to the singles and, and you're fine you, you got everything from it um were you into degrassi no, no. Me neither. <laughs> I just, uh, I saw the clip, spoiler alert, I saw the clip yesterday where Drake, well, Aubrey Graham gets shot. Oh, Real yeah. intense. Yeah. It's a really intense show. Did you watch? Hmm. That, that was, I know I'm that not was supposed to talk to her. you, Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> she's just shaking her head and pretending that she's not there, but. The fourth wall. Yeah. Broke it. So, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the funny thing is, uh, the new video for I'm Upset. Uh, actually sees Drake reuniting the whole Degrassi cast. Oh! Yeah. I know none of this. It's kind of lame. 
I would love that the song is called I'm Upset. That yeah. sounds like a Drake meme, except it's real. Right, and that's so much how I feel about this album. Okay. Like, it's like he was trying to pick up on what everybody makes fun of him for. But like a self-aware kind of way? No, like a, no, it's it's uh, almost <laughs> like, it, it almost feels like a caricature. Of okay. Drake, you know, so it, I don't think it's worth it, but I think a lot of, we're going to be seeing it on a lot of, like, 15-year-old girls' Instagram bios. Um, so I think that's... that's Ain't nothing wrong with that. Well, no, there's nothing wrong with it, but it, it's just, like, it's not for people who are fans of, like, real rap music. Not that I'm... <laughs> Oh, I, no, excuse no, no. me. <laughs> I don't want to say, I don't want to sound like I'm a, like a gatekeeper and say, like, yeah. this isn't real or whatever, but it's, like, in a year where we've had, like, really good releases from, like, Pusha T and Jay-Z and Beyonce and Nas and Kanye and Kid Cudi and whatnot, this is just pop rap schlock, you know, it's not, it's not up to That's the same level. Yeah, 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 it's not up to the same That's level the same. as us. Exactly. Uh, but last... Uh, is the only album that I actually enjoyed this week uh, is a new one from John Coltrane called Both Directions at Once. Now, I know what you're thinking, because Tony said it earlier, John Coltrane is dead. He's like, dead. really dead. He's been dead since the 60s. Uh, but this is, heck. yeah, this is still a new album of all new material, which is really great. He recorded this album in 1963, and then they just lost it. Uh, and they recently found the masters and uh, remastered it and released it as a new record. And it's really cool, you know, like uh, just for for fans of jazz, this is going to be something that you're excited to hear uh, just based on the history of it. Um, it's not Coltrane's best work. It, it came out the year before he uh, recorded A Love Supreme, which is, you know, like the John Coltrane album. Uh, and it's it's not up to that level, and he doesn't get as experimental as he does on some of his later stuff. But it's still really cool to hear, you know. Uh, it, for what it is. Exactly. Like Nothing if you're else. if you're a fan of him, if you're a fan of the genre, definitely give it a listen. But I think that does it for uh, new releases for this week. Tony, why don't you take us through uh, what came out this month in other years? Well, it's not gonna be this month. Some of them were in June. Uh, well, yeah, so last month and other months. Last month and this month. So yes. first, let's talk about um, Robert Park by Ceremony. Okay. I know you aren't huge into Ceremony. Uh, I listen to some of their later stuff, but I, okay. I miss the... the like L-Shaped Man and stuff. Yes, yes. Yeah, L-Shaped Man is cool. Um, personally, I never got into Robert Park, and Robert Park came out in June of 2010, um, so that's eight years. Nice. Yeah. Um, I never got super into Ronner Park when I was younger and like getting into Ceremony. Yeah. Um, violence Violence was my go-to when I was younger and a lot more angsty right. um, than I am now, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, but yeah, Ronner Park just never really did it for me because it's super weird. Like it's just kind of a weird record. Um, and it grows on you, like yeah. it has to, I think, unless right. you're like a diehard Ceremony fan. I think that's it's the kind of record right. that like has to grow on you. Right. Um, but then I saw them live, I think in like 2014. 14, I don't know what year it was, um, and they played a bunch of songs from Runner Park, and I was like, oh, yeah. and then I waited in the merch line, and I bought the record, and it's been one of my favorites ever since, because it was just kind of like the energy was, yeah. like, you have to, like, feel it, I guess, I don't yeah. know, because well, it's weird, it's just real weird. Like, what sort of stuff is it? Because, like, later on, they, they started to get, like, new wavy, like, yeah, it's like not, Joy Division, it's not, but... it's not like Joy Division at all. It's so hard to explain. Ceremony is one of those bands that, like, every record is, not every record, but, like, their records are different from each other. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't stick to one genre. Like, Violence Violence is, like, grindcore, and then they go to l Shape Man, which is, like, yeah. Joy Division, like, right. punk, whatever. Yeah. It's, like, wild. Um, that's why I like them, too, because they, they kind of adapt. But, yeah, Runner Park is... It's, like, it's <laughs> punkish. Ish. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, it's so hard to explain. I wasn't expecting anybody to ask me this question my life what does a runner park sound like weird it's just weird. it's just weird it's just weird so so it sounds like right up my alley yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah it's pretty good um but again it had to had to grow on me a little bit right because i saw it live and i was like oh this is cool i get it and like just hearing everybody like yell the lyrics it's yeah. like oh okay right. even though these are weird lyrics that i don't understand um it seems like everybody else really likes it right and feeling it um, so yeah that's a really good one runner park cool 
Okay. What about number two? Number two, we have Pythons by Surfer Blood. Surfer Blood. Surfer Blood. Yeah. It came out in June of 2013. I bought it when it just came out, even though I never listened to Surfer Blood before. Like somebody told me to listen to Surfer Blood, and, and you I just saw, bought it. I saw Pythons in the record store, and I was like, right. okay, sure. Yeah. Um, Some of my favorite records are ones that I just bought. Yeah. Like, I've seen, you know. So. Didn't even like like Spotify existed. Right, <laughs> really, like you didn't like, need I could to have just gone to Spotify and said, hmm, I wonder what Surfer Blood sounds like. But no, I'm you spent like, money. I spent twenty dollars on a vinyl record. Oh my god. I was sixteen. Right. <laughs> and very cool. Of course. Um. So I, I've spent twenty dollars on a record that I've never heard anything from the band, and I don't regret it at no. all, because I still really love that record. Right. I love it so much. I love it so much. It's so good. Um, it's like dancey, and it's like catchy and melancholy sometimes. Right. And it's like a perfect summer record, like the kind of thing that like you put on when you're in the car and you have yeah. the windows down, and you're like, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, it's like one of those. Yeah. Um, it's real good. And it holds up. Highly recommend. Awesome. Yeah. Number three. Number three, we have. Number three. <laughs> Choice Manor. I think Choice you told Manor. Me. Yep. <laughs> Never hung over again. Right. Um, and that was July of 2014. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I told myself I was going to memorize that. Ah, you're fine. Um, Joyce Manor is one of those bands that has like. Big following, yeah, like kind of a yeah, cult yeah. following. Like, yeah, a lot of people have Joyce Manor tattoos. Right. I'm not necessarily one of those people. No. But like, this is the only record that I ever actually listened to from them, like, Same. front to back. Yeah. Like I don't know why. Yeah. But, that's, but that's like, just the one. they're they're so like they're pop punk through and through, but they're not like. It's not like pop punk, pop punk. Right. They're not whiny. Yeah, and which they're I'm not a fan of. Yeah, they don't do that like. Philadelphia pop punk sound, you know, um, they're just like, they're like pop punk the way the Buzzcocks were, you know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. Like it's, it's real, mm-hmm. just punk music that was punk. It's like real, like it feels right. real. And I think that's what's missing from a lot of pop punk. Right. right. Fun fact good. about that record, you know who's yeah. on the cover? Who? Francis Quinlan, the lead singer of Top Along. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, huh. she is incredible. She is a badass. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else that you want to say about uh, uh, Joyce Manor? Joyce Manor. Oh, it's another summer record. Yeah, That's definitely. For sure. Absolutely. Um, it's a little bit less happy than Surfer Blood. But, but it's like, it bops yeah, around like a lot. I get some weird looks from the yeah. old ladies when you're playing it from yeah. the open windows, but it's still good. Cool. All right. Well, that does it for this week's New Music Monday. Uh, we'll be back again next week where hopefully uh, I'll like some of the things that come out this week. Uh, so yeah, check us out, uh, and, uh, leave a comment for stuff that you want us to, to review next week.